Hey everybody, thank you so much for tuning into my channel. If you guys are new here, my name is Lila, and uh, my husband's name is Brett, and we have two beautiful daughters under two. Um, I wanted to share with you guys my top 10 tips for having a baby in the hospital that a lot of doctors and maybe your friends and anybody you've been talking to might not know, or maybe you've been searching around the internet a lot and trying to find some tips to kind of ease your mind on the whole new experience and process of having a baby. Uh, my tip number one would be don't stress too much on shaving down there. I know it's very hard when your stomach is getting very huge. Um, also, this video is probably going to be TMI, so for those of you who don't like TMI, skip this video. But um, So shaving can be very hard down there. Um, you, you can't really see anything. Your belly's in the way. You can't even see your toes. Um, so I guess my two tips with shaving would be either one, don't worry about it. The nurses can do it for you or the doctors can do it for you and they'll take care of everything down there. Or two, um, go to the dollar store, buy a very wide mirror. They have them there and um, that can kind of help you when you're trying to see down there and see what you're doing if you don't want to cut yourself and just kind of free, free <laughs> shaving down there and trying to figure out what you're doing. Um, my tip number two would be also with lady down there, um, taking evening primrose oil. Now, I'm not a doctor or a nurse or by any means, you know all that, um, but if you do your research on it or if you talk to your doctor about it, um, evening primrose oil has been known to open the cervix and help it ripen. Um, it won't set you into labor, but it does help with a certain dosage amount, and like I said, talk to your doctor or do your research. But take an orally at the last trimester of pregnancy, it can help in your so soften your cervix up. So when you are going to go to give birth, you're already like started the process and it's not a difficult process and a long process for you to go to. Um, another thing besides just taking um, evening primrose oil orally is to insert capsules down there. Um, if you prick a hole in them and insert three of them, with um, obviously wash your hands first, be very sanitary about it. Um, you're gonna wanna poke a hole in it with a, um, say, needle that you have sanitized or you know something new. Insert those puppies in there and let them do their work overnight with a pad. That way, um, when it runs through, because it is an oil, it won't get all over your bed sheets and everything. But that really helped me with both my girls. Um, my first daughter, I was one centimeter dilated, which I probably would have been more, but I'll tell you about that later. Um, and with my second daughter, I was three centimeters dilated when I went in. So I really firmly believe that it really helped me. Um, I only had a minor, minor tear with my first daughter, and I know that that really helped too. Um, along with when I did the oil, the evening primrose oil, I also used, um, uh, what's the oil? Olive oil to do a perineal massage. That way it will help when you are giving birth, your body kind of already knows what to do. And like I said, just do more research on that one. I'm not gonna make a whole video on it, but it does help, at least it helped me. Um, but like I said, consult your doctor. Um, tip number three, sorry, I'm reading on my paper. I saw mommy room. Tip number three would be pack a robe and slippers. I personally love this because you're in those you know, gowns that are uncomfy, they're showing everybody everything, and you have visitors coming sometimes. So it's nice just having one slippers because they have the socks, of course, but it's nice sometimes just to have slippers to slip on just in case, say, your water breaks and gets all over your socks, or, you know, it's just nice to have, especially in the bathrooms and walking around the hospital, it's nice to have some slippers. Um, and the robe as well as when you're done giving birth, it's nice to have something that, you know, when you're nursing and everything like that, if you decide breastfeed, it's nice to have something to cover up with when visitors do come. Um, tip number five. Okay, so here's, or tip number four, I think I skipped one. Tip number four is make sure, I made this mistake with my first daughter, make sure your husband gets sleep during the labor process. Now I know it's very hard when you're like, I want, you know, or, or, or your boyfriend or your partner, whoever, I want them to be with me, I want them to experience it, but chances are with your first child, it's gonna be a very long process. And think about, do you want them to be there more for the labor or when the baby comes? Because I made that mistake. I was like, oh, I want him to be there for the labor. But when my daughter came, he was so tired from staying up and being absolutely exhausted and like the adrenaline and everything that he crashed. 
So I was up for two days straight, no sleep and no help because my husband was so tired. So that would be one tip I really wanted to express is just make sure that your significant other or whoever's gonna be there to help you gets rest too. It's very important. Or you know, pack a five hour energy or two in your bag, your hospital bag for them. Um, okay, so tip number five, and this is why I didn't dilate as much with my first daughter and something I wanted to express that's very TMI, but I'm very open to talking about it because I wish I didn't have to go through that experience. Um, when you're obviously you're pregnant um, or you're watching for a friend and you'll have to know what they're going through, um, you get very constipated because all that pressure is on your bowels and your intestines and you can't really, your food's not processing right, it's all being squished in there. So you're very constipated. Well, I didn't know exactly what to expect going into labor with my first daughter. So when I was a little backed up, I didn't realize like, oh hey, when you're giving birth, you're going to be pushing one thing leads to another, right? So one thing I really wish I would have done is not only just eat very soft foods like soups and stuff before, you know, that when you know you're about to go into labor, eat very good foods, easy to pass foods, foods that don't give you a lot of gas, stuff like that. But also if you're, if you're about to, if you know that your due date is coming up very close, you can take stool softener and stuff like that. That's healthy. Talk to your doctor again stool softener to help you go to the bathroom because for me, my personal experience, I was so constipated that I literally wasn't progressing in my labor. So I went on 12 hours in labor being induced before I even started to um, dilate because I needed to go to the bathroom so bad. So finally I had to go to the bathroom with the, with the help of a nurse. So yeah, don't let yourself get that bad um, with the help of a nurse. But also with that, don't be embarrassed if you end up doing in the bathroom while giving birth because I guarantee you almost probably like two out of three women end up doing it or passing gas. It's going to happen. Don't worry about it. When you're pushing, you're pushing with your bum, not with your boo hoo with your bum. So <laughs> it can happen, ladies. Tip number six would be have your partner or your husband or your whoever hold your neck while giving birth. Um, when they tell you to give birth, um, I'll explain this as one of my tips. Your neck is going to be very strained from what's going on. So remind your partner when you're in the process of pushing to put their arms or hand behind their neck. Usually one hand's on the leg and then the other hand you can put on your neck. So that way you're not straining and your neck's not killing you by the time you're done with labor. Um, so that would be tip number six. Tip number seven, be extremely, extremely pol polite and nice to your nurses. They are there to serve you. But think about it. If somebody is being extremely rude to you, like um, a waitress or a waiter, if somebody was being rude to you and you were serving them, would you want to keep giving them refills, keep serving them? Not really. So even though you're in a lot of pain and there's a lot going on, I, ex I really want to express to be super nice to your nurses and to your doctors and listen to them and be polite because it really helps them want to take care of you and take care of your needs. Um, they'll want to come back. They'll want to come see you to make sure you're okay to check in on you. So be extremely polite and know it's hard when you're in a lot of pain and you're really frustrated. But from my experiences, being polite, a lot of my nurses were there for me than other people that hadn't been so polite to their nurses. Um, number eight, birthing plans. I was all for birthing plans with my first daughter, but to be honest with you, sometimes things don't go the way you think it's going to. Um, there's a lot of things that hospitals now just do naturally, like um, skin to skin right after birth. A lot of people think, oh, I got to tell them about, you know, skin to skin, but a lot of doctors will honestly ask you, do you want skin to skin? The only thing can, I can think of that might be in your birth plan that they might just not like outright ask you is say, do you want to, do you want a mirror to see your baby? Which my doctor asked me anyways, even though that wasn't in my plan. And I personally just did not want to see what was going on down there. So I said, no, but there are small things you can say like, oh, Hey, like when I'm giving birth, you know, can I have a mirror down there? But I would just want to say as a tip, don't have really high expectations. Don't say this is what needs to happen because you know, eight times out of 10, something could go different or something could go not wrong, but just different. You know, like some people plan on vaginal birth, but things happen and it might happen to be a C-section birth. So educate yourself on that. Um, yeah. So just don't have super high expectations. Don't, um, demand things, but you know, set firm to the small things that you do want to happen that are probable. Um, tip number nine, 
Um, this kind of goes with uh, tip number six about having your spouse or whoever hold your neck. Um, when you are pushing, my doctor would say, curl into your push, Lila, curl into your push. And I never understood what that meant with my first daughter until I had my second daughter and I had it explained to me. So when you are, I'm going to try to enact the birthing process. So when you are giving birth and you're sitting on the stirrups and your, hair, your legs are in the air, you are really going to want to curl into your push as if you were doing crunches you need to curl into your baby because if you were just sitting up and pushing it's not going to do anything you really need to pull forward push down on your stomach with your abdomen and use those contractions to push your baby out so with me my experience after learning how to do that your body really just when you curl into your baby it really starts things going it will really start pushing your baby through with my second daughter, I think I only had to push maybe four times before she was out. My labor was extremely fast after knowing all these things with my, first, my second daughter. With my second daughter, I think the full labor, even being induced, was only five to six hours. And then my first daughter was, I think, 19 hours or something like that. It was a really long time and it was really excruciatingly horrible. Let me just say that. <laughs> so really curl into your push as just think of crunch into your push crunch the body down and get that baby out um the last tip that i have would be if you um are very reserved and you don't like photos or um videos being taken down down there i totally understand but one thing i know a lot of people regretted was not taking pictures while they were pregnant because they felt you know gross or like huge i don't know how it is but it's nice, even if you don't post them, to have them to reference, you know, way down the line. Because trust me, after you have a baby and you don't see it anymore and years go down the road, you see pregnant women and you're like, you are so beautiful. You might not feel like that right now because you're swollen and you hurt and you're big and like everything's different. But you are absolutely 100% gorgeous. And I think that you should... If you want, take pictures to remember. You don't have to post them or anything, but take them. What's the worst that could happen? You delete them. But my tip would be for the birth, if you have a friend or a family member that's also in the room with your spouse, have them take pictures from the back. Like my sister was behind me in the corner, so she couldn't see me anything down there, but I had her take pictures from that angle or hire a photographer or whatever you want. It's just lovely having pictures or even video if that's what you're comfortable with of the birthing process. But yeah, guys, that's my top 10 tips. And I hope that this really helped you guys. Um, good luck on your labor. And uh, yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys have any other questions or any other tips that I can give you guys, let me know in the comments down below. And I hope to see you guys in my next video. Let me know how your birth went. Bye, guys.